Hi guys, it's John Hudson here. I just thought I'd um, do a bit of a review on the Beta 430 RR Racing that I got a month ago. Um, I thought it'd be good to do um, sort of just a bit of a spiel on it because I've owned 13 KTMs since 2004 when I was racing them in the Safari. So, you know, they stood by me very well all those years and I didn't have an issue. Um, but I just thought um, for the amount of finish that was on here and um, the suspension that um, I was hoping to get from the beta, I just thought I'd give you my feedback on it. So, um, obviously the bike, um, you know, it looks the part, obviously. It's a pretty, pretty good looking thing, but I've got to say that in the first month that I've owned it, I've done three rides, which was basically to, to bed in the suspension and then I took it to Rex at Fuel Talk and Rex basically was able to just set, set the bike, he set the static sag for me. He then played around with the front suspension and the rear. I will admit, when I first got the bike, I thought, geez, this thing's stiff. It's really, you know, I'd heard great things about KYB, but I thought, geez, this is, this is pretty hard on my hands because I've broken seven bones in my hands, um, you know, over the last few years of riding, so they're a bit tender. But anyway, um, once Rex had played with the KYB, so I had to get, you know, a couple of hundred Ks on it, but then he just set it. And didn't, I haven't put new springs in, I haven't any revalving or anything like that. And all I can say to you is, it's the best suspension I've ever ridden, ever. And I've had um, race bikes that have had the best tuners in the country have two or three goes at them. And you know what I mean? It was like, I just can't believe. So to give you an idea, I bought this bike for $16,200. Um, the only thing that I got to the dealer to put on was these um, radiator guards which are put on all my bikes which you know when you have a little low side it stops the radiator from collapsing so 16,200 now for example the KYB front suspension um, it's got on here you know your, your bigger foot pegs some nice features like this button here um, you press that and the seat comes off. You know, just little stuff like that. It comes with a lithium battery, um, you know, to, to keep it light. And as we come around the bike here, you'll see obviously the little red an anodized bits, which, you know, don't mean anything, but they cost money if you've got to buy them. And I put on this um, slave cylinder protector, that was only $60. Beta Australia have got a really good setup, in my opinion, where they've got a, one big um, factory shed where all of the aftermarket parts are, and you go onto their website and you just order it, and then you nominate the dealer that you bought it off, but then that warehouse sends you the parts. And I got these within 24 hours of buying them. So, you know, that's pretty pretty good when most of us are getting used to waiting for stuff for months with other brands. Now, just going around the bike here. So, for example, when the dealer delivered it, I asked them to pull all the blinkers off. They did all that. Um, the pipe, stock as a rock with the, with the map that's in it, is really, really good. So once again, I don't have to go and buy a $600 pot. You know what I mean? It, it works really well. The sack suspension in the rear here, it's, yeah, it, it's beautiful. One of the things that I've been warned about um, is it's fantastic suspension. It's just got to be maintained. So, you know, what they're saying there is, you know, perhaps every um, 80 hours of riding, I've got to, you know, get in and do the oils and fluids and you know get it serviced it might be less for the guys that are you know that are real keen one of the things that i um misconstrued when i bought the bike was i thought i want because i came from a 500 exc i thought i want full power and i'm not going to worry about this traction control anyway rex from fuel talk basically sat me down he said john 
what I want you to do is ride this with basically in wet mode, which is a, a doughy map, and also with traction control on. He said the beef of the engine is actually in the last 60% of the throttle on this. So by having those on, you can actually be a bit more brutal with the bike and get into the meat of the power. But then when you've um, coming into a corner too hot, for example, you basically have got traction control on, it's minimizing your, you know, the bike stepping out. And I've got to say that um, that was really good advice. I've, I've worked out, you know, a lot of people, a lot of top enduro riders, you know, you see them fighting over who's going to get to ride the 250 because they're doing the fastest times on single track. You know, there's a lot of method in their madness in the fact that, you know, these bikes often have too much power. The other thing that I really noticed that was, you know, and I've put about six of my friends on there that they've all just owned KDMs for the last 15 years like me, there were some standout points that we all thought was a surprise. One was the lack of vibration in the engine. There is none. It's just silky smooth. The other is the gearbox. The gearbox we found to be very precise. Now, one of the things, um, you know, that I think um, it's sort of hard to, for me to critique because I hadn't ridden the latest KTM was this thing steers so nimbly, but I believe that all of the modern, you know, all of last year's models bikes have got, you know, similar ergos. They are all steering a lot better than bikes from five years ago. And they're also, you know, they're just, um, you know, they're just refined. And anyway, I'll just get this back up here. Now, um, so, Brakes, the brakes on this need a lot of respect. They are very, very strong. So, you know, um, I, I thought, you know, nothing can be as good as a set of Brembo brakes. Well, all I can say is that um, they're different. They come on harder than a KTM, but it's nice to know that they will come on and come on well. Some other stuff um, that I um, believe, you know, the average trail rider is um, probably going to need to do is I've boiled this once in some pretty heavy going. I opted not to get the thermo fan on it from day one because I thought I'll just ride it and see if it boils. And then, for example, what I'll do now is I'll put some really good um, radiator fluid in and, you know, I'll drain out the standard stuff, which is what most people pretty much do anyway. And then if it boils again with really good radiator fluid in, I'll put in a, um, a thermo fan. You know, um, I think they're about oh, $380 fitted. That's, that's about it. Um, but, you know, that... That would be the only thing that I would perhaps add to this bike now. Um, you know, I've got to say that on the suspension side of things, one of the things that I noticed that was substantially different from the KYB to the white power is when you land off a Woo Boy on, a, um, on white power suspension, often you'll collapse in the suspension and your bike will sort of, you know, it'll, it'll basically land and then you'll lose momentum. And, you know, for good riders, that doesn't occur because they're under full power the whole time when they hit the jump to when they're landing. So they don't get that sag. But a lot of guys, obviously, you know, older riders, trail riders, will hit a jump and then basically we're just landing as best we can, you know. And in this case, what I wanted to suggest about this suspension was it lands and you don't lose momentum. It stays up in the stroke and you just get continuous drive. And um, that's been the biggest, because I, I fully expected, because it was so good on the little bumps, on the little, you know, the little stuff, I thought 
Well, it has to probably collapse after I do a decent, get a bit of decent air on it, but it doesn't. It actually, it performed really, really well. So what I'm saying is, is the KYB to me seems a lot plusher for the little stuff and then actually stands up in the stroke better than a white power when you land. Because, you know, as I said, it's not about if you're doing it right, you don't have these issues. But if you're doing it a little bit wrong, good suspension can really, really help you out. Um, so, yeah, guys, that's that's my sort of where I'm up to with the beaters. And I've got to also say that I didn't jump straight in. Um, you know, I was worried about resale of the beater. I was worried about reliability of the beater. But... You know, one of the guys I share the shed here with, he's had a Beta 300 for three years and it hasn't missed a beat. And as many of you live in South East Queensland would know, it's rained here for two years. We've had the most horrendous conditions for motorbikes to actually be worn out because every ride we go on at Belthorpe or Peachester has just been a mud fest, you know, where it's all like grinding pace. But the beater hasn't missed a beat, um, you know, in those three years. And to give you an idea, this bike here has enough spec on it that if I went and bought something similar in the KTM land, for example, I'd be spending the thick end of $18,000. Um, and then most likely I'd have to get the suspension tuned. I think that's, that's where... Um, you know, so I'm two grand up before we've left the garage. Um, but I've got to say that I'm riding this because I love it, not not because of price. I think I think it's a real contender, and I I've got to say that um, you know, for example, a very good friend of ours who had worked in the motorcycle industry has gone to Beta and is running the um, the spares and accessories there. And wow, what an experience that was, you know what I mean? For, to just order the parts online and get them in the post the next day, that was incredible. Oh, one part that I've missed here too, is whether you need them or not, it's completely up to the rider. But for a crusty old KDM rider, I found that the bike, the ergos, the bars felt a bit low for me. So I put these 20 mil risers on and Beta, you know, once again, they've got five mil razors, 10, 15, 20, 30 mil razors. So they've got a good selection and they're not dear. They're like um, 30 bucks. You can just try what suits you, but they made it um, a little bit easier to st stand up. I didn't feel as cramped and more to the point, it made it feel like a KDM is the truth of it it may i was just used to that saddle position so i would say to the guys that are coming from kdm and huskies that if you want to feel at home that the bar risers are probably not a bad thing but you know ride it first see how you how you like it you might you know guys that are a lot better riders than me like david knight swear who's six foot four swears that you never need a set of bar risers so you know horses for courses and you know but anyway so I'll just start the bike up. So guys, what, what's going on here is obviously there's an automatic choke. Well, not a choke, but the EFI's um, working. It's revving higher while it's cold. And then you'll notice the revs will drop down. One of the things that I, um, I'll just go through this. Full power, that's dry, that's wet, so that's a different map, that's a slower map. And that's traction control on, traction control off. Awesome. So it's very simple. So now the bike's dropping down. Yeah. So guys, um, with the traction control, to give you an idea of why there's, um, you know, why I believe it's, you know, an advantage is if you're going up a hill and, um, for example, it's wet and snotty, 
Um, the traction control will work brilliantly because it'll just decrease the engine revs that you will, you will roll over things and you'll still have momentum. For example, traction control on a, you know, on a dry shaley hill that's really steep, honestly, that's still 99% rider. You've got to hit it hard and you've got to hit it fast. You know what I mean? And you've got to believe. Traction control is not going to save you on a long hill which has got plenty going on. You've got to still be up to the moment of standing up and going at it in third gear and dropping it down to second once you hit the first bit of rough stuff. And, you know, that's, that's the truth of that. But um, one of the things that I did, I got the dealer to do too, is when you buy these, they can map it, or in the mapping when they're doing it, they can make it that the idle, the bike's idling a little bit faster if you do a lot of bush riding. And I'd recommend that because um, a lot of bikes will stall if you're trail riding as you, you know, you, you've gone in hot into a corner and there's, you know, a heap of engine braking, next thing the bike snuffs out. When it's got a little bit higher revs, you'll get less stalling. So um, that was a good thing that the dealer did for me. They basically mapped it so I had a little bit more idle speed, um, which was great for me. Because the other part of them, um, I think that, you know, that a, a person, um, you know, I think that most of the new bikes are similar is the amount of engine braking that's occurring is a lot less than on a seven-year-old motorbike. So this, to me, feels like a two-stroke because it's lack of engine braking. It virtually has none, which, you know, that's, um, thank God I've got bloody good brakes because when you're used to an old, older bike, it can be pretty scary without your engine braking for the first time. But um, all I can say is that, you know, this bike, um, it just is beautiful to ride. You know, the, the seat originally was hard, um, too hard for me. Um, but what I did was basically, I pulled it off and I basically put, a, put it on a block of timber so I didn't wreck these two little lugs here. And then I just stood on it with the heel of my boot because you can actually break this foam down a bit. But when I first got on it, it felt like a piece of steel. So, yeah, it, um, I've heard of guys hitting them with a cricket bat. That's another way. You just hit them with a cricket bat to just break them down a bit. Um, so, yeah, guys, that's it. Have fun. Bye.